Hi guys, in today's video I will share my experience tidying up as inspired by KonMari method. Honestly, I wasn't very excited about this book and even thought I think everyone already tried this method and I don't think I really need it. I thought that as long as I regularly clean, my home will be clean. But I guess it didn't happen and I felt like our home was becoming messy too quickly. I didn't like it. I decided to finally try the KonMari method and collected quite a few ideas, mental shifts and things to know and some maybe practical advice on my journey which I would like to share with you today. I read two books and I found that the first one is more on the idea and story side and the second one is more on a practical side. They do overlap in some places, but I loved the fact that I read both of them as I think they do complement each other. So let's get into ideas. Idea number one, that it's okay to learn about tidying and cleaning, even though it seems like a common knowledge. When I feel that something is off in my home and cleaning doesn't help, it means that it's time to dedicate my time to learning, as this is a lifetime knowledge. And that's what I'm actually doing experimenting and reading those two books and I already see some results. Understanding the difference between tidying and cleaning. We may confuse tidying and cleaning and this was the case for me as well. I thought they are the same thing but while reading Marie Kondo's book I found a nice explanation that tidying deals with objects and cleaning deals with dirt. So when we tidy up it means we are deciding what to keep, where to keep it and how to put it back to where it belongs. And when we clean, it's a traditional getting rid of dust and other dirt. Conmari method is about thinking of what to keep rather than thinking about what to discard. Initially, I didn't see the difference, but then I understood. We need to keep things that spark joy and discard everything else. In that case, we surround ourselves with meaningful things. But usually we think the other way around and we think about what do we discard and leave ourselves with everything else. Idea number four resonated with me a lot. The whole idea why tidying is important is because it means taking care of ourselves and our home, bringing the things that bring us joy and creating home our power spot, comfortable environment which brings us energy. Idea number five is that when our space is completely clean, we don't have to worry about tidying, so we are free to focus on the next issue that is important in our lives. And I do feel it's true because I have this feeling that how can I relax or do my hobby when I have a drawer which is not clean or when there are things I need to clean in my home. But as soon as I clean, I do feel more freedom. 6. Listen to your belongings. It was very interesting for me to learn that Marie Kondo talked about items at home as they were alive. It's very tricky to describe, but after reading the book, I do truly feel that all the things we own share the desire to be of use to us. So whenever we find something that doesn't have any function to us, or it's not something that we care about or we are happy about, it's, it's most likely that the thing that has already done its job in our home and it's time for it to leave. Number seven, being grateful. Even when we don't feel joy about some of the things, but we know we need them, it's about being grateful for having them and still taking care of them because they help us whenever we need them. The whole idea of the KonMari method is to make a permanent progress and for this we need to follow the method very well and even if some of the ideas seemed unusual to me, I thought I'd do them and I'd do as many of them as I possibly can and see how it will work for me. KonMari method is not a sprint but it's rather a cleaning marathon and during this marathon it's important to stay on track and keep deciding of what to keep, where to keep it and how to put it back. The next idea is to tidy as quickly as possible. Here I was wondering about how long does it mean um, to tidy quickly and Marie Kondo suggests that it might take you multiple months up to six or so. Well, I'm lucky in some way as we are renting a small apartment so naturally we have very, very limited place to store all of our items and in total it took me several days to go over all of our stuff. The next one is start with intention as the whole tidying up process may take time and it will take time. It's crucial to feel and want the changes you are looking for. Mess at home makes me feel worried and I constantly feel that I need to clean, but I also want to spend time on other things like doing my hobbies and uh, spending time with my family and friends. So having tidy and clean home is something that frees my time and also gives me a feeling of peace. Marie Kondo's process of tidying is not traditional room by room. Here we need to collect all the items of one category from all of our home and every room and put them on the floor and start sorting. 
It's important to take every item in our hands and feel it. In the end, you will have only items which bring joy to you, and also you will have a good overview of what you need to arrange. The order of the discarding is very important. The basis for the decision of do we give the thing or do we discard it is to truly feel does it bring us joy and maybe it doesn't. And here we need to keep the things that truly bring us joy, make us happy. And this decision is very tricky, so we need to get used to this feeling and to learn how do we feel when we feel joy. So it's easier done with clothes and it's more complicated with some sentimental items and that's why the flow of the tidying is very important. We start with clothes, then books, then papers and documents, and then miscellaneous and finally the sentimental items. And that order gives us time to hear ourselves and learn about ourselves better. The next point is to start arranging only after we discarded everything. First of all, this is how we know exactly what do we have and what needs a place. And secondly, discarding takes a lot of decision making. It requires a lot of energy and we have much bigger chance that we actually finish discarding while we are still in that flow. Don't force other family members to do the same. Starting with your own things gives you the full potential and responsibility. For other family members it might be very difficult to part with things. Very often, as soon as you have done the progress on your side, the other family members intuitively go towards that direction as well. In my case, I started with my items and my daughter's items, as she's too little to decide. But I do notice exactly what she likes and what she doesn't use so much. Don't do the grey area. You know when you put the items in a box for multiple months and then you decide to keep them or discard. It will feel very off for items and uh, if it's very tricky to decide then just look back at the past three months and see if you have used this item and what did you feel. Or just treat them as the ones that uh, will stay in your home. Because if we are keeping the item, we have to take care of it. Tidying up is a process and even though it may feel like a never-ending mess, and I think the best way to continue is to first of all come back to your vision and your why. Why would you like to have a tidy home? And remind yourself about that. But also it's important to remind yourself that uh, there is a finite number of the items in your home. So there is an end. Start tidying in the morning and also allocate enough time. In the morning we have more energy and we make better decisions and there is more chances to finish some parts of the tight enough. I realized that after several hours I thought there wasn't an end to the process and I was very happy that I started it all in the morning. While arranging your items, the best practice is to keep one category of them together or very close to each other. For example, all the clothes in one space. And categories will be different for everyone. So I have a separate category for my video items and also for my hobbies, which are multiple things. But I actually realized those categories after going through all my items and it required me some bird's eye view. Learning how to arrange and fold clothes will take time. The basic principle is to create a rectangle from whatever item you have and then fold it standing, as in this way clothes take less space. I experimented with this and after some time I found a way that really works for me and I understood which clothes I prefer to have on a hanger and which I prefer to have standing or lying in a drawer. And now I find that I more often tend to actually fold my clothes properly rather than just throwing them into the wardrobe and it really makes me feel very good. Sorting documents. Here I decided to be very careful because I had a situation when having an old payslip and old bill was super important for me. So take your time to think about which items are irreplaceable. As when we discard a sock for example or a mug or a screwdriver, we may get a new one if we really need them. But that's not the case with some other things. Don't buy any storage solutions until you really need them. The idea here is to first use whatever you already have and only then buy a storage. I realized that after discarding a lot of things, existing storage is actually nearly enough for me and I just need a few minor things. The next idea is use boxes to keep smaller items together. Definitely a game changer for me as I always find that I have some random little things which are all over the place and I just don't know where to put them so now they have their own home. 
In the book, Marie Kondo suggests to use shoe boxes for storing and arranging things in the closet, and I think it's a great way to start and understand what sort of storing solutions work best for you. And for my organization, I prefer to use something that I can wash either with hands or with the washing machine because it makes me feel that it's really clean and fresh. I hope you guys found some inspiration in this video and I would definitely recommend you to read both of the books because they are so bright, inspiring. They made me feel good while reading and they made me to think about my home uh, in a different way. Let me know if any of the ideas we discussed today stood out to you. And if you are exploring minimalism as I do, please check out this video. I hope you will enjoy it too and I will see you in the next one. Bye!